Welcome to the Jock Doc Podcast featuring Dr. London Smith. When he's not playing sports, he's reading medical reports. Introducing your host, Dr. London Smith. Hello, and welcome to Jock Doc, where we discuss fitness and health and how to incorporate our modern understanding of science and medicine into our daily lives, but without it being so boring. I'm your host, London Smith. Com. I would like to begin by apologizing to our listeners. We received some feedback that I have been using some unnecessarily complex terminology, such as thigh and fluid, and I will try to use more common words in the future in order to help each and every listener to keep learning at the same pace together. Here to help me with that is our producer, Cameron. Hey, hey, hey. Unlike me, he doesn't spend so much time in the doctor's lounge, so he gets to hear about what's really going on in the world. So don't be surprised if he makes a small note once or twice to help keep the podcast on track. Also with us is DJ Dylan in the house. (laughs) Plus, Cameron has informed me that we may have a guest arriving a little later. So keep listening for that. Uh, Before we move on, I would briefly like to address a question posed by one of our listeners, uh, Ted Fatsman. Um, He said, my saltines came out sour. Should I put them back in the oven? So, um, first of all, I would like to thank you for contacting us at Jock Doc so repeatedly. Though we did receive this email the first time, uh, we would appreciate it if you refrained from sending the same message uh, 93 times. Despite that, it is, of course, always a pleasure to hear from our listeners. Oh, he, I think he he contacted my mom. About the podcast? Well, about the saltines. Okay, did did she answer this question? Because I was about to say I'm not. She said, ask Dr. London. Oh, okay, so he went to her first. No, he went to you. Then he was like, I, I, I'm guessing here. I don't know this guy. Okay. It sounds like he went to you. Then after 70 something times, contacted my mom. Logical move. And right. then she's made the logical move to say, contact Dr. London about it. Because you are, that does make the most sense in my mind. Okay, well, I'm. Okay, I, I for one have never um had to bake saltine crackers again because whenever you buy them, they're already baked crackers. It sounds like this person, his crackers are a little soggy. Okay, if that that maybe he got them wet, I didn't think of that. Maybe they aren't uh, packaged. So I so would are you going to help the man or you're not? Okay, so I guess with that in mind, um, I would say for one thing, always double check the recipe and make sure you are using the correct ingredients because my suspicion was that maybe he'd doused them in water to cook them or something or doused them in something so my advice would be double check that recipe because as far as i know uh most saltine usually people don't cook with saltines but if they do my guess is that oh you've never eaten soup this is part of dr london's elitism he's never eaten a cup of soup never gone down to the soup store and Uh, just ordered a bowl of you know, you know, chicken soup. Yeah, for well, the soul, okay, right? Right. Well, normally you have a the the crackers are separate from that, and they're come straight out of the package. Never had, never, never gotten cold. No, okay, I have, and I, the heat was too expensive, like the rest of us had to deal with, and we got to eat a cup of soup. Doctor London okay, just well, turns the heat on. Doesn't matter what his bill looks like at the end of the month when you're Doctor London. Right. This is the kind of stuff, man. Right. Well, okay. Well, the in any case. just is not, they just, they're not going to get this. Okay. Oh, they're not going to. Okay. Well, I can. Just tell the man how to get his soggy crackers to not be soggy anymore. Okay. So my, my advice, I'm going to go ahead and just, my advice that I have would be to double check that recipe um, and make sure that your ingredients are correct. Uh, and this rule applies to everything from cooking to chemistry. But um, above all, keep practicing. Uh, You'll get there. Once again, thanks for reaching out. And I I think we can, I I think we need to be making initiatives to kind of connect with our fans a little bit more. So I think that if you're dealing with soggy saltines, maybe just send them into the studio. And then no. you can deal with them and then mail them back. No, I okay, I don't so think So just that go would... ahead. You can find our address online. Okay, on that's LinkedIn. not a... Uh... Uh, send in your soggy crackers and we'll uh, ship them right back to you. 
and you can put them in any soup you want. Dr. London is against soup, but you can put in any soup. Uh, now for a tale from uh, the world of hospitalist inpatient life. I was doing rounds Ooh. one day. Right. I was, I was doing rounds one day and had a patient who was extremely angry. She was infuriated that another consulting physician had casually told her that this patient was obese, and she found that to be insulting. Uh, now, to clarify, calling someone fat as an insult, that's inappropriate, right? But um, the terms overweight, obese, and uh, morbidly obese, they are all clinical terms based on a patient's body mass index, or BMI. Uh, and that's a calculation based on an individual's height and weight. So, this patient had a BMI of over 30, which puts her in the category of obesity. I cannot speak for the tone used by the, the other physician, but uh, obesity itself is considered a diagnosis, and using that term uh, is not necessarily an insult. I think it's maybe just probably the way you said it, because the way you say a lot of things, it comes off as an insult. Okay, well, in this instance, it wasn't actually me who said they were mad at... Or, right, uh, it, it wasn't actually you. I, I understand how, you know, shows like this work. Okay, well... Oh, yeah, this patient. Not my patient, but another doctor's patient. I don't remember his name. What's his name? Mystery guy, anonymous. Okay. But it's probably... I mean, you probably went up to this person. You said, hey, you stupid... You, you were fat bitch. You're so obese. And that kind of stuff is inappropriate in a, in a professional setting. To just walk up to someone and be like, why do you... Like, why do you look the way that you look? There's something wrong with you. You're messed up. I just personally, I would I would be offended at that. Okay, and I think that I would be too. Uh, to clarify, it it wasn't me that did that, but that that just is true, Cameron. That'd be you look. You just what's wrong with you? Are you talking to me now? Oh, just eat just eat another McDonald's. You're just gonna eat McDonald's every I single just... day, every single day, every single meal. Uh, okay. Oink, 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 oink. You can't say stuff like that, Doctor London. I, I agree with you that I that I should not end. This little piggy went to the hospital. Inappropriate for such a professional setting. I, uh, and once again, I agree. And it uh, anyway. Let's we'll go ahead and move on to today's topic. Okay. Okay. Right. So today's topic is um the intestinal tract. So you have a small and a large intestine, but don't let those names fool you. The small intestine is very large, 20 feet long, but uh, it's Yowza. small. Yeah, it's small in diameter, though. That's where it gets its name. The large intestine, on the other hand, is comparatively short at five feet long, but is uh, much wider um, in diameter. I, uh, I was trying to be proactive about this podcast. Right. So I had contacted the uh, American Gastroenterological Association. Okay. See if we could try to get maybe a doctor, uh, one of your colleagues, yeah. to uh, talk about what you're wanting to talk about on the show. Okay. Is that and our so, guest? Or... No, I had gotten in contact um, with a doctor, uh, Robert Hughes. Okay. Um, and then he, he contacted me back and he said... Um, the American Gastroenterological okay, well, Association okay. um, considers us traitors to the medis- medical field um, and oh, um, demands that we don't talk about uh, the intestinal tract anymore. Um, and you, um, your children, and your children's children will not be allowed to be a member of the American Gastroenterological Association. Um, now, that and said... They were they were throwing around like words like we have lawyers that can kind of shut this down. You're you're doing a disservice okay. to the American public by th- th- this kind of inane show. But I mean, like, I mean, you can probably still talk about it, right? Like, what are they really gonna do? Well, is that based on something that you sent to them, or is it based on the podcast itself? Because I feel oh, like I had been sent pretty... them a, a couple episodes of the podcast, and, and that's when he said you're a traitor to the field of medicine to the American I, people. That's because um, I've. If, I've stuck to. I, I mean, he said. I mean, he he talks a lot about your looks specifically, um, which I thought was probably too far. It sounds. He said you look. He called you Gumby. Huh. Um, but that sounds odd to me. But uh, I, and Gumby's an odd insult to use. Uh, wh- he kept saying Doctor Gumby, and he kept saying, "I bet his arms stretch out like Gumby." Okay, I. It's almost like it's hard to take that as an insult. It doesn't sound that bad, but 
I, maybe from a the, gastroenterologist through context it seemed like it was supposed to be extremely pointed and mean okay well i'm i'm very sorry to hear that i guess i can uh i guess i can cut the the lesson I, a I little short just today it. just you can just do whatever you want it's so the I'll, internet baby well i'll i'll say a I'll finish. I'll finish a little bit. There's no here. FCC regulations here. We can do what we want. Is that true? Because you usually manage that kind of I thing. Don't, on... I have no idea. I assume so. Okay. Have you seen some of the stuff online? Uh, yeah, like people posting all sorts of things. I mean, I go to like scholarly sources, and but people don't usually post. Yeah, people post all sorts of things. You can just post whatever. Okay. Okay. Well, um. In any case, I guess we'll go ahead and uh, move move on from the, the lesson today. That because I was going to talk about how you know it goes through the small intestine. Small intestine absorbs sort of the food. Large intestine absorbs more of the the fluid, the water from mm-hmm. the food. But uh, and then it comes out as poop. Um, oh, as, as fecal matter. oh, Dr. London. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry that. Oh, finally having some fun on this show, huh? I, oh, I guess so. That is gross. Which now. That you say that for the one time that we've been threatened with with legal issues. So hopefully that that will turn out okay. Well, Dr. Linda, maybe you can actually help me out with something um, mm-hmm. kind of relating to this. I've been brewing this beer lately. Okay. And the my main complaint that I've heard, and it, I think that it's just a coincidence. I think with, you know the you know human growth hormones that are in all of our foods these days mm-hmm. and you got soy but also all these chemicals and stuff there's all there's all sorts of factors but every person that has drank it has stopped pooping and has not started again okay that so doesn't... i don't think it's constipation because people when they talk about constipation they usually talk about it in periods of time like say they say i was constipated for 72 hours these people have it's the function has stopped which i think is a positive thing That that doesn't sound good. That sounds like um, uh, are are these all in elderly patients or in younger or all ages? Okay, I, I would from five to, I uh, well twenty five is probably the oldest. The, you should not be giving this drink to anyone. And why are you giving five year olds beer? Well, I mean it's beer that I brewed safely, so there's not going to be needles in it, which is what a lot of people worry about. Their kids go door to door getting beer from neighbors, right? No, it's because of the alcohol content. I would say probably once a month, kids knock on my door, they ask for beer, and then what you're supposed to do as a nice neighbor is, you know, give them beer. So, so children... but a lot of parents get a little strict about it because you know they worry about needles in the beer and all sorts of things. But be, now that I'm doing it my on on my own, I can ensure that it's safe. But they have just stopped pooping. Well, and it's not even just stopped pooping. It, it, from the way they describe it, it just sounds like the the function, anything that happens below the neck has stopped. Does that make sense? Are they breathing okay? Because that uh, is below the neck. I mean, I don't know. They're telling me these they, things. Okay, so they, they can speak. Or they're texting me these things. So, I mean. Uh, that, And these are, you have children coming up to your house asking for beer yeah do you not no that sounds like like five-year-old children coming up to your house asking for beer. i mean there's one five-year-old kid most of them are six plus but there is there is one kid who is five okay well it's still under under 10 years old it's kind of unusual very unusual to be seeking out alcohol so sort of publicly it seems and aggressively too they are they pushy about it? I mean, they do push me. Yes, <laughs> try to get into my house. Yes. Well, that, that okay. So I would say probably stop ser- stop serving that. Probably stop making that. Find it. Find it. Like Google a recipe instead of uh, brewing it. Whatever you're making because it sounds like it's causing medical issues. Again, but uh, and like I don't think it's well, the needle aspect that I think it's the. Let's file this away. We can come back to right. it after a couple weeks when I once I have a little more data, so I understand. It, exactly. Well, it sounds like you're experimenting it's, on people. Essentially, well, it sounds. Things sound like some things sometimes, but are really other things that aren't the thing that sound like 
as well. I don't... Okay, maybe I can agree with you on... Let's move on. Okay, Okay. great. Um, do we have any sponsors today? Uh, yeah, we do. Uh, if you... Basically, if you want beer, just contact me. Um, okay, no. Just, if you, just hit me up. Um, honestly, just text me if you have my number. I think you can find it on the LinkedIn. So, I mean, if you're there... If you're there on the page to get the address for um, mailing back those crackers, oh, just which, d- please don't do that. Either. While you're there, just leave a note, maybe like on the cracker package, saying like, "Hey, ship me some beer, and I'll I'll shoot some your way." <sighs> okay, well, it, so Cameron's beer. It doesn't have a name yet. I've got to figure that out. I'm thinking like beer buddy. Well, it's it sounds like it's harmful. I I don't think you should. But we can okay. We can move on. Um. Do we have a guest today? We do. Okay. Okay, good. All right. Uh, and who is the guest? Uh, it's that person over there. Oh, oh hey. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Uh, my Hello. name is London, uh, Dr. London Smith, and this is Jock Doc. Uh, what was your name? And just, I'm going to start doing this with all of our guests from now. If you think Dr. London's being kind of mean, you can just kind of, you can just kind of tell me and oh. I'll take care of it. Oh, okay. Because okay. he... The way the way he kind of bullies people is kind of aggressive. Oh, oh, okay. Um, and I, some would maybe consider it assault. But go ahead. I, I I did not pick up on that um that energy right off the bat. But uh, thank you. As as we progress um through this session, you'll I, see it. Yeah. Oh, I you know if you you obviously seem very confident in this decision. Mm-hmm. Um, but. I, I tend to see the best in everyone that I oh, encounter. That I, sounds great. Same. I do the same. I try. I try. I really do. Um, as far as names go, I, I, I'm I, not sure I can give you my legal name for purposes of certain um, conditions of just uh, legality. Okay. Uh, if, you know, I, I, ha- I, I deal in certain uh, mystic paraphernalia and properties that some might call narcotic in nature so okay well I, oh okay okay and and so you know i i, I just um i've been places um spiritually mentally uh metaphysically um esoterically that i i i just don't think the law enforcement of today's generation could comprehend if, if that makes any they sense they just can't handle it that's, you can't handle that, what you're putting out. I, I think this is so. Why I brought this guy in. That's yeah. I he's been telling me some stuff that's like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, but so, but but my friends they uh they give they gave me a nickname um because of a dream I had once um where I was floating down into an eternal abyss and as a as a raven and so naturally Ravenhole. Um, was the name I, I adopted. So you can you can call me Ravenhole. Mm-hmm. A ho- hole of the Raven also works. Yeah, or Holy H- Holy Raven uh, is is new to me, but I I will accept that as well. Ravenhole. Ravenhole. Okay, and that's. Uh, would you think of that as a first and last name, um, or as one? More of a first life, second life kind of experience. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I'm not sure which one came before. It was the hole first or the raven or the raven and the hole. But they both go hand in hand, I think. Okay. So so what you're what you were kind of hinting at earlier, I feel like was uh if, if I just may ask sort of bluntly, um, are you a drug dealer? Oh uh, that, that's a harsh term. I, 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 I just want to say right here, we do not uh, we don't endorse drugs or anything right, like yeah. that, but we Nothing, do endorse yeah. experiences. That's right. That's right. That's right. Um, we heavily, heavily, heavily endorse and promote experiences. I like that. I like this guy. I like okay, this well, guy. hold on, because that's why you gotta listen to this guy it's talk, like man. Prescription the stuff he says. Because there, if I mean, a doctor, I was hanging out at his apartment the other day, yep. and the stuff he was laying. Down. Oh man, thank you. Because if a if a doctor prescribes a drug. Then that's been through some someone who has you know the the clinical oh, knowledge. Oh, of course. Well, I, I really if don't. If Dr. London yeah. prescribes mm-hmm. something, it's mm-hmm. the best thing in the world. It's going to heal you of all your diseases. Yeah. Oh, I'm sick, Dr. London. Give me some drugs. Push pills down my throat. Oh, 
Well, but I was at this guy's apartment, mm-hmm. and the stuff he he was giving me, I don't know, man. We were, yeah, different different worlds, different lives. I I believe you even adopted a name, but have you forgotten it? Well, I thought I was Ravenhole. Oh, so um, you just kept saying it over and over again, but that didn't make it your own. Well, I think I'm gonna. I think I'm just going to call myself Ravenhole as well. That's okay. Yeah. That's fine. How about you call yourself Ravenhole and I'll go by Hole, hole of Raven for now. Um, let's see. Do I want to be Ravenhole or this is an opportunity to change it up. I've got to think about this for a second. To change it up from today? I could be today? Foxhole. I could I be like, think, of, think of what can rolls like off the tongue well with hawk. Beer Buddy. Beer hawk. Buddy Ravenhole. Ooh, Beer Buddy Ravenhole. How about Raven... B- Beer, whole beer. Raven's holes, holes of the Raven, buddy. Nope. Hole of the raisin. Hole of the Raven, buddy. Beer, uh, whole Raven. My hole with beer, and Ravens. So Raven hole beer buddy beer hole Raven. It's a palindrome. Ooh, think of it like a tavern, like the Raven hole and the beer buddies at Raven hole. Mm-hmm. It's like it's very folky, very Lord of the Rings, very Middle Earth. You know. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, for, for my sake, I I I get that you feel like you're on sort of a journey with your name. I'm gonna go ahead and call you Cameron still, if that's okay. Just Ooh, Cameron it, Still, I love that double Cameron yeah, like Still, still like waters. S- Still Waters of the Cameron. That you would see maybe like a raven landing on some Still Waters. A raven hull, even. No, no, Doctor no. London. Oh my gosh, that's okay. Yeah, that's disgusting. Sexualized. I see how this is. All right. Anyway. Anyway. Uh, uh, so tell us about Raven Hole. Um, yeah. What you okay? Is is your full time job? Um, the I guess experiences. Sale, selling or is or do you do uh do you have another job like a day job Ooh, good question um good good question i i did and i i still technically on linkedin i think i do go under one job title on um, linkedin link on the linkedin i do hold one job um and have for the last 12 years but in i i'm not sure i, I don't think i ever put an end date do, do you get a paycheck for that, or is that just a social media listing that you selected? I believe I have myself listed as an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur. Um, and I, I think that, you know, we, you know, we hemorrhage a lot of money when our startup kind of culture. So uh, pr- technically, I don't think I've had a paycheck from that job. Okay. Because, but you know, I mean, I mean, Amazon didn't start making money until like two years ago. Right? Isn't that just how startups work these days? CEOs, you know, it, it's not about the profit. It's about... Uh, kind of getting names, getting your name out there. Okay, I thought you were going to say about the product, but do you... No, it's definitely not about the product. Definitely okay. not. Okay, so... Which so is experiences. The product is experiences, right? In the in the pill form. Oh, so. I would not... No, no I, I tend to or work... tablet? In, it's mostly gummies, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what sort of... um? They're... You said you said narcotics earlier. I, whoa, I, that's what I've been labeled as, and I'm trying to, you know, Cameron, back me up here. I, I would, uh, some of the discrimination that people face today, that people throw words at people. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. That mean certain things, that convey certain things and certain ideas that people have about certain things that don't necessarily accurately represent the things that they're talking about. So you're. Well, whenever you, because you're using kind of vague, vague words. No, I'm here. not. Okay, let, 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 just hear me out, guys. Like for, for the sake of uh, of those of a higher consciousness level, the effects of these, um, not ah, oh, see the, the, it's really hard to find the right words. I wanted to say substances, but that's just my preconditioned response to this society's like pushing vocabulary of their of vocabulary, kind, kind you know? of basic, yes, normal exactly. vocabulary. That's you know, like intestines. You had talked about intestines, and, right. I, and I don't think that that's an accurate description of the of the depth of, and the crevasse of the cavern of the of the internal being. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. that isn't that such a more fluid way of saying the, the inner soul of man that that just happens to be represented in this physical form when really it has so many depths and so many layers. Well, well I wasn't I wasn't so much referring Thank you. Thank you. 
Well, I, I wasn't so much referring to uh, sort of the, the spiritual insides as I was to the very physical, easily seen, you know, uh, <sighs> easily proven insides that exist in a human, yes. which would be the intestinal tract. It wasn't meant to be spiritual. I can see how you'd be limited um, through that through that lens, yeah, the, that focus. The magical intestinal tract that is 20 feet tall. Okay. Taller than the tallest basketball player. You have you have a basketball player inside of you. This is the kind of stuff that Dr. London tries to convince people. Well, no, it's... I, for one thing, I didn't say tall. It was long. He like said it was 20 feet tall, taller than the tallest basketball player. He said Yao Ming ain't got nothing on this or something like that. I don't remember. Probably twice as yeah. tall. You, I don't remember exactly what you said, but it was it was along those lines. Okay, so... And I'm sick of it. Okay, so, so when you say you have... These experiences that you sell, uh, how I get how, how is business? Uh, I again the the wording of business is slightly see again for the sake of you know the people that will listen to this. I, I must reiterate that I, it is not it is it's its experiences mm-hmm. spiritual experiences of the mind of the body and of the soul and the, the trifecta the trinity of experience mm-hmm. and not a business. I. If people decide to gift me, then that that is that is their choice. But uh, I really can't I can't I can't use that word here. Yeah, but it's like fifty bucks. Uh, I was gonna say. So you accept you you uh, have ooh, a certain. Sh- 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 I, mm. Well, yeah, my no. my sister helped to move a couch. In exchange for an experience. Okay, and the the experience came in the form of a physical experience tablet no again a, tablet see it's super uh um, a I'm, how about maybe more of an experience i like that yeah that felt good originally i wish we would have kept to it Doctor. I, I guess the, the 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 difficult part of that is that an experience is something that happens sort of uh mentally right yeah it does <laughs> and so the um whenever you say that you're selling an experience what you're selling is a method by which it's not meth at all. See, I, I heard Don't that word. It triggered me. It really did say that it's an experience. I heard it. Whenever you describe it as an experience, um, I just, just for the sake of um, sort of being able to visualize it. Uh, if someone hands this, uh, we'll call it experience to you uh-huh. and you, you hold it in your hand. What does it look like? Like before you, I assume you, you swallow it, you ingest it. It 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 um it's the, it's hard to describe because once you're seeing through the eyes of the the all knowing, it, it it changes shape and form. So who can say whether the first time experience of seeing it in through those eyes can be actually somehow validated through the secondary experience, which some actually prefer and call more real. And that secondary experience can be so subjective. Mm-hmm. So that first experience may just be the gateway and, to... And Dr. Ravenhole has talked a lot about this, about how, you know, like the, you know, you're holding your car keys, but, o- you know, only in this dimension are you holding your car keys. Maybe in another dimension you might be holding, like, you know, because, like, realities are sort of layered on top of each other. So in one reality, you're holding your car keys, and in another reality, you might be holding, okay, like, a banana. It's... And so to say, what is this physical thing? But in this... Um, I mean, it's an experience in a physical form that is an experience. So, so can, we, can we say before you have the secondary experience, your for, for your primary, your first experience... What does that do? You, are you swallowing something? Are you lighting it on fire and then inhaling that? Oh no, no! It looks like a pill and it has a smiley face on it. I is I, that I, what I, you were asking? Yes. Oh, what it looks like? Yeah, like that. And it's it's one single. Well, it's actually, one I, product? I, I did bring a bag. I did bring. Well, and I save bag for the sake of again, like don't don't don't. I need people to just not think of it as bag, but I I did bring one. Yeah. Let's. Uh, uh, yeah. Get on some of this. <laughs> I don't. Uh, I'm. I don't think that I can. Come on, Doc. Hold out your hand. I. I don't. Okay, for our listeners, I'm. I don't. Ex- ex- describe it visually. Okay. Yeah. Visually, 
He's right. It's a, it's sort of um. I guess it's kind of like a Skittle or a, an M M&M, and M, except with the the smiley face on it. Uh huh. Um, um, now details are very important. The smiley face has many interpretations based on the subconscious reading of your own projection onto that smiley face. Now tell me what inflection of smile are you in this moment witnessing? Right. So this is the what I would term as like the standard one. Like it's not an emoji kind of, or I guess it's like the sort of basic emoji of just it's two circles for the eyes, it's two black circles, mm-hmm. um and then the 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 crescent sort of curve underneath. Um, Whoa, that's the kind of stuff you're seeing, man. Okay, well I haven't taken any. Nice. Okay, cuz you've taken four? Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, this is, I'm taking them you're right just, now. You're, okay, you're eating them like he's, a meal. He's got a snack pack. He actually, uh, we call it the snack pack. Mm-hmm. Do, do most of your um, experience seekers uh, take that much? You know, it, 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 I think it has to do with tolerance. Um, tolerance okay. to the real world. So oh. the more that they've been able to kind of like saturate themselves with a mm-hmm. sense of um i would say I, 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 resistance to the fundamental um f- enforcement of this society's just kind of polluting corruption and they've been able to kind of like rise to the occasion then they can snack they can snack like a like a mofo you know and okay. they can they can fly on the wings of raven holes i i what would you concur yeah, I have probably like 150, 200, like a night. Okay, so you've been on this for a while. Yeah. For how like how long have you been how, how long have you known each other? For one thing, <sighs> well, lifetimes, we met... lifetimes, lifetimes. Well, yeah, lifetimes. I was gonna say we met three weeks at a Kroger, <laughs> but what Ravenhole has kind of taught me and kind of opened up my um, chakra. As it is, and it's a limiting term, Cameron. Remember that oh. chakras is what they, the children of you know men, tend to call the spectrums of the you know rainbow. Absolutely. Um, so really, we've known each other for th- thirty-five thousand, forty-five thousand years. But three three weeks in and, hum, in human terms, yeah. and, and you met at a Kroger. Yeah. What were you um like anything in particular? Just going shopping for your groceries. Oh, you want you want my shopping list? Uh, yeah, I'm I bought just, eggs, Doctor London. I, I'm. I was. This just... is part of Doctor London's medical system trying to get all of the, it's this HIPAA stuff trying to get as much information as possible so we can share with all of his friends all my personal details. Tell, don't tell me, Cameron, that you've done a DNA test. Well, uh, that wasn't Doctor London. Did force me to take a DNA test. He forced me oh, when my... oh. you you did sign the consent form, but we did. I, we haven't. I have good news. I have good news with the the amount of experiences that you've been consuming since we met. I mm-hmm. believe that at this point you do have new DNA. Wow, is that well? That's so awesome. you believe it? So have I, you? I believe it, and therefore he receives it. Okay, okay, because it is a concerning thing. If I receive DNA, it, I receive it. Yep. Am I receiving? Take it. it now? Take it. Yes. Okay. I receive it. If someone's DNA does change, that's sort of like you know the the Chernobyl. I receive it. Nuclear reaction. Okay. Uh, the oh, nuclear, like Chernobyl. Yes, yes, like Chernobyl. Uh, that those sorts of uh, accidents can the radioactivity can cause changes to DNA, and that's um, things like. And you will have, a, when you take one of these experiences, there is a, a high chance you will have an accident. If when that's you, what you're getting at. I, I wasn't, but what kind of accident do you mean? The same kind of accident we were talking about before with the intestinal tract and stuff. Oh, so this is... Are you, okay. Does hey, this now that I'm paralysis? saying it, some of these kids who are stopped up because of uh, Ravenhole's buddy beer, Hole Raven, they could probably use some of this, these experiences. No, no, because these are... I'll... I'll give you a few of their numbers. Okay. These kids these yeah. days, they all got iPhones. Yeah. Yeah, every single one of them. Mm. And you're talking yeah, about do. the five, yeah. six-year-old? Yeah. One of the five-year-old has like a galaxy. Okay, I meant in terms of... He's got one of the folding... The numbers that you're going to give. The galaxy folds. 
Uh, okay. Well, um, so... <sighs> Dr. London Smith, mm-hmm. I noticed you were still holding your experience. Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't really think that I you want should, to... You should probably take it. it well, because this is... Do you want the, the guys from the American Gastro... Well, Society, American Society, to think you're cool? I... They're all. You think they're not taking this stuff? They're all taking this stuff. I don't think they. Are. They're all taking this stuff. Could you tell me what what exactly is in it? Um, for it's or it's all organic. You wouldn't understand if I told you. I I feel like I. That's the most organic part about it. You couldn't wrap your mind around what it is. I, I kind tell of, me what's more organic than that? Something that you can't even think of. Let me tell you an experiential walkthrough of the ingredients. It's like. A Christmas tree meets the summer beach of the Bahamas while also scaling the Alps okay, with well, a small penguin and accompanied llamas mm-hmm. I don't and know the th- Sahara Desert digging deep into the once fertile lands of prehistoric oceanic activity. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know if that's exactly what uh, what we're looking for, and I so I don't think I'll take it just to. But we can ask Cameron for it. Can his also it, it can also be inserted anally. I, I lots of things can be, but I don't know that that's that's wise. Are oh, you too afraid? Honestly, yes. Baby, I'm gonna text. I'm gonna text. Text Doctor What's His Face now from the Gastrophilos the Gastrophilosophical Society. And I'm gonna tell I him right now that you're not even cool enough to hang uh, doctor, have some experiences of yourself. Doctor London you're Smith. to have like an actual real experience because you're so used to these fake experiences you always have at the doctor's office. All these I, fake people. I hate fake people. Well, it's mm. not a. It's not that I'm a. It's because what you're... All these fakers coming in and being like, oh, Dr. London, my feet hurt or whatever. Since I'm professionally... like, oh, yeah, this is great. But you're not talking about real stuff. I'm, when was the last time you talked about something real with one of your patients? Like, hey, man, maybe let's shelve your uh, stuff about your foot pain or whatever. And how are you doing? Well, that's usually What's my first on? question. My first question is usually uh, what we call what an open... What do you open... think about? Well, I don't usually ask that. Like, have you ever thought about, like, people were alive 10,000 years ago? Isn't that crazy? This is the kind of stuff you could be talking to your patients about if you weren't so focused on having non-experiences talking about foot pain. I would I would really like to see the version of Dr. London Smith after having experienced the experience. Agreed. I don't... Look, this is... We're in a, a professional environment. This is to educate... And to educate about things that we have clinical knowledge of, which have you had this tested by well, the I FDA? Tested, I, look at look at our friend here, my friend. FDA fakers, deniers, assholes. Okay, well I don't. Yeah, think about it. Well, so they put things through a. There's sort of a process to make sure that things are safe for humans to to take, and so. Oh, well, whether or not it's Doctor London approves it machine. Is that what it's called? Does Dr. London approve this? Well, let me just put this on a conveyor belt and see if Dr. London approves well, it's, of it. No, because it, it, like you were describing with the beer um, that you that Which you is made. really good, by the way. And, but it, 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 it ta- apparently it's... causes paralysis from the neck down from what you were describing. So the beer is really spicy, and I'm trying to tone that down a little bit because I do think it is maybe dangerously spicy as well as being dangerously cheesy. But, and it's a beer. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. So, because of reasons like that, that Raven a great Hall, example of Buddy Beer, Whole Raven, Whole Raven, you can get it through. Uh, like I said, just text me and I'll I'll send you a batch. Well, I don't think that it's really. Uh, I don't think I'm going to try it t- today, just because it's not tested. Uh, except for I guess on both of you, you've had your experiences, but I think professionally, I probably shouldn't. That, that five year old just texted me because I just I told him like. That you were unwilling to have an experience and he called you a pussy. <laughs> oh. uh, okay. He's so cool too. He won't let me like hang out with him, but he, I, I am allowed to have his number. 
he allows you. Um, yeah. May I? May I have my experience back? I, I, I. If you're not going to partake. Yeah, I. I I'm sorry. I'm not. Uh, not this. I don't like to take hallucinogens. That. <laughs> it's okay. I, I think I'm. I'll take one now. Same. Okay. Well, I guess. I guess that that's all the time we have for today, really. So thank so you. Good. <laughs> thank you to Cameron, uh, as always, for um, sort of keeping us in the know with with what people want to hear, um, and for bringing his uh, tens of thousands of years uh, friendship, um, or whatever you would call it, experience share, uh, Raven Hole, um, and uh, thank you to Digital in the House. Oh yeah. Name. Well, he's having an experience, man. Go I want to see what happens. I'm going down the hole. I'm going down the hole. Okay. Well, ah! um, so we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and end it there. Uh, ah! All right. And thank you to our listeners. Um, uh, this is Jock Doc Podcast. See ya. <gasps> Before you skip on ahead to your true crime podcast, we need to address something. We are now up to five listeners in total, but according to the listener stats, you are all uh, glue sniffers. Uh, specifically Elmer's glue sticks. Uh, Now, we love our listeners, but it is kind of embarrassing that not only do you all sniff glue, but you sniff glue that does not actually give, uh, you know, a high or anything. Um, Not not that we would encourage that. Uh, So please tell your friends about the podcast so that we can stop making all of our marketing geared specifically towards the uh, very specific demographic of Elmer's Glue Stick Sniffers. Um, Also, please subscribe, rate, and review the podcast, and follow us. We are at Jock Doc Podcast on social media. And uh, also, jockdocpodcast.com. Send that to your friends, relatives, and your enemies. Thanks. (laughs) 